Hey everyone, this is Tom. This is part one of a three-part Excel tutorial. Excel is an extremely useful data analysis tool. If you don't want to mess with programming, Excel is the fastest and easiest way to analyze a lot of data pretty quickly. Virtually anyone can learn this stuff. It just takes some time to get used to the functions. I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to build a more primitive version of iPixel's POF Campaign Viewer, which is the spreadsheet that combines your POF data with the data from your tracking software into one easy to read table. If you haven't gotten your copy, simply subscribe to our mailing list now. And if you would like to follow along, please pause the video now and download the follow along file located above this video. Now you might already have what you need with the campaign viewer. I just wanna use this as an example to show you the fundamentals of Excel so that you can practice and use these functions for any of your other internet marketing needs. Okay, let's get started. In the first tab of the file, you'll find a typical daily creative delivery report that you would get from POF. So I've got about two days of data here, and I've put the copy title in as my creative name so that it shows up in the report. This will be useful if you want to analyze how well a specific copy does across a large number of ads. In this first part of the tutorial, I'm just gonna show you a few very basic functions to parse your data. First, let's extract the keyword, which will match our POF data to our Prosper 202 data. So I'm gonna make a column called keyword, okay? And what we need to do right now is extract the keyword from each of these URLs. So how do we do that? Well, the URL is a string, so we need something that pulls a part of the string out of a, a bigger string. That function is called mid. And the first parameter of mid is to tell it which text you want to pull the string out of. So we're going to select the URL. Then we have to input at what starting position should our string begin. What you want to do here is look for a unique sequence that will identify where our keyword is. So clearly here, kw equals is pretty unique and probably won't appear anywhere else in the URL. So we're gonna use a function called find. And what that does is helps us find where this unique string kw equals is located in each URL string. So we're gonna find kw equals within, the second parameter of the find function is within this, the URL string and then the number of characters, we just want the end of the string. So I'm just going to put 200 here. So logically, this should help us find our keyword. Let's see what happens. Okay, it looks like it included the part of the string that's kw equals. We just want everything that's after kw equals. So in order to ignore the first three characters, we have to add three to our find function. The find function will locate where our kw equals is located. And we want to start the string three characters after that. So let's try it now works perfectly. Now we just need to fill this down to all the rows. Perfect. Okay. In my guide, I'm a huge proponent of standardizing your code, which is basically what I've done here with this sample data. I also mentioned in my guide that you should have unique identification codes for your images. So a particular image should have a code and whenever you use that image in an ad, that ad should reflect the code of that image. So in my own library, I can identify 122 as a specific image. Now, when you use this image across multiple ads and you have this code in all the ads, you're able to summarize all of the data across those ads and analyze what the best images have performed for you across all of your ads. So in order to calculate that data, we need to find what the code is within each of these keyword strings. While I'm at it, I'm also gonna show you how to find the gender and the age ranges of these keywords that I've put as part of the keyword code. So what we're gonna find here is gender, age starting, and age ending, and finally, the image code. For gender, we're again going to use the mid formula. And we're going to extract it out of the keyword column that we, we've calculated for ourselves. 
Now the starting position in this case is always going to be the same because I've standardized my keyword. So I know that the gender code is always going to be, looks like the 11th position. So I'm going to start it at 11 and the number of characters is just one. So now I've, I know that my keyword is targeting the female gender and I'm going to apply the same logic to age starting and age ending. This time the age takes two characters. Perfect. We've extracted the gender, the starting age and the ending age of our keyword. Construct your code with whatever information that you need to extract. These are just basic parameters that I've shown you as an example. Now, finally, let's extract the image code. For the image code, I'm again going to use the find function within the mid function. I could still use the static mid function like I did in gender and age, but I'm going to show you how including an operator in your keyword can help easily find your codes. So I'm going to use the mid formula again. I'm going to find it from the keyword and I'm going to use the find formula for the position parameter. I'm going to find the at symbol. I've purposefully put an at symbol there inside my keyword so that I know that right after the at symbol is going to be my seven digit image code. So I'm going to find it within my keyword. I'm going to plus one so I don't, I don't include the at symbol and I'm going to find seven digits of that. And there's my image code. Let's fill these columns down. Let's also highlight these columns so that we know we added these columns. Okay, so now you've taken a raw report and have parsed out these parameters from this report. Now you might wanna use this model again for your next report. So how do we keep track of the end of the report being a specific size? Well, let's try and anticipate for this example, 500 rows. So as long as your report is equal to or less than 500 rows, this should work. So we're gonna fill these formulas down, down to the, the 500th row. Well, we've gotten a lot of error messages here. So how you're gonna avoid these errors is by inserting a conditional. So before our formula, we're gonna use an if statement. If this cell equals blank, then return blank else we're going to return our original formula that seems to work so we're going to copy and paste this formula across the entire range now let's look at the end seems to work but we still have an error message here so we're going to copy this part of the formula and do the same thing here Copy and paste that formula. Let's take a look at the end of the report. Okay, now it looks great. So if our data is one more one row longer than this, it's gonna automatically calculate the data for that row. So to recap, we've gone over three basic functions. The first is the mid function, which extracts a substring out of a bigger string. The second is the find function, which can be used within the mid function to indicate which position uh, you would like to find your particular string. And the last function is the if statement to handle the errors. Some of this might not make too much sense right now, but by the end of the third video, I promise you all of this will be pretty useful. So get good with those three functions first, and we'll see you in the next video.